How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Trail Tales. My name is Kyle O'Grady. I am a huge hiking nerd, and in every single episode of this podcast, I, I, I usually chat with other hiking nerds, but not for this one. This is going to be a solo episode because, well, I got a few things to catch everybody up on. I'm just going to jump right into it. Uh, I went back a little over a month ago now. And I tried to finish the PCT again. For those of you that uh, that have been following my content for a while, you probably know the whole saga. But for those that are new, uh, I did most of the PCT in 2022. I did over 80% of it, closer to 90. And I didn't finish because of fire closures. And then last year, 2023, I went back to try and finish those sections that I had missed on my original attempt. And I finished about half of what I needed and I got burnt out again, closures in the same parts of the trail. And then this year I went back again, trying to finish everything and (laughs) well, you know what? I'll save that. I'll save that for uh, later in the episode. Um, I'll fill you in on my third year in a row of failing the PCT Um, But first, I have a few more stories and a few more things I want to talk about. Uh, The regular listeners, you'll know that, well, the show has been a little spotty, to say the least, over the past few months, over the summer. You know, I was putting out episodes like every other week. And then for the past like over a month now, I haven't posted any episodes. Um, So I'm going to talk about that. And I have a few I have a few stories um, before we get to the PCT stuff. So first of all. I just took a bunch of time off work this summer. This is my work. Making content is my work. Although, as I've said before, Trail Tales doesn't really pay the bills necessarily. Uh, but, you know, my other channel does. And I took a bunch of time off of that. I took just, I just, I lump it all together. It's all content. It's my job. And I took some time off. And um, I feel like a lot of the time you see these YouTubers, and I shouldn't say this, honestly. I'm not trying to like throw shade or, or, call anybody out or say this is even wrong for that matter. But you see a lot of YouTubers, they'll make a video after a long absence and they'll be like, oh my God, I was just so burnt out and like, oh, it's so hard to be a YouTuber. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm being a jerk here. I'm sorry. But, um, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like you, you see those videos and I want to be clear. That is not what happened with me. I was not burnt out. I wasn't like sick of making content. I just wanted a break just like any other job, you know, you get vacation time or whatever you take a vacation you take some time off that's all it was for me i i love doing this and it is also my job and i wanted some time off and so i took it because i can and uh i'm very very lucky that i can that i can do that um because i took a lot of time off i took like over a month off um and originally most of that time was supposed to be so that i could go finish the pct But anyways, I'll get into that as I've teased a thousand times at this point already. So I had the best summer of my entire life, not even close. Um, I went and I stayed with a friend of mine who lives in the Portland, Maine area. I was with with him and his now wife um, from like the end of May all the way through the beginning of August. And it was so awesome, dude. And I was getting up in the whites. I went to the Adirondacks, which I'm also going to get into in a second. We were hiking in Maine and I hiked. Okay. So those of you that are in the Northeast, especially peak baggers, you might be familiar with this thing called the Northeast 115. It's every 4,000 foot peak in New York and New England. Although a couple of the New York ones are a little bit under 4,000 feet, but they're part of the Adirondack 46. So they're just part of the Northeast 115 anyways. Um, And I've been, I guess, chipping away at this for years I went really hard on it back when I was in college and even high school, um, way before YouTube, way before Trail Tales. And then I kind of stopped caring as much about that list after the AT, to be honest, but I still chipped away a little bit. And for the past like three years, four years, I've only had a few peaks in Maine left before I complete the entire list. And um, now I only have one peak left. It's a sugarloaf in Maine. It's like a, there's only like a two mile one way. So I guess like four, four and a half miles total, something like that. 
So super easy hike. And I should have done it, but I just didn't, I just didn't do it. I did a couple other ones. Um, oh man, it's gonna, I'm gonna blank on them now. Uh, fuck, Abraham I did. And maybe that was all I did in Maine this year. I did um, Reddington last year too. But anyways, um, I'm just rambling here, but that's what this is all about. This is a podcast. And uh, just I just had the best summer ever. And I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about it. Um, first thing I'm going to start with, have you guys ever heard about the Allagash Wilderness Waterway? I'm guessing that again, you, uh, you New England watchers and listeners, I know there's a lot of you, some of you guys might know about this. Um, or if you're a, uh, a canoer and you like to paddle, you've probably heard about it cause it is pretty well known, but, um, I got to tell you guys about this a little bit and, and I know it's not hiking, it's not backpacking, but it is very hiking adjacent and as someone with a hiking and backpacking background um i can tell you that i think you're still gonna really find this fascinating um so the allagash wilderness waterway it's like 90 to 100 miles in way northern maine i'm talking right right south of the canadian border at the very top of the state it goes through the most remote wilderness probably on the entire east coast certainly in uh, new england it's it's super cool and you're you're so far out there and um a friend of mine the same friend i was staying with my friend dan he 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 got married uh in in august uh beginning ish of august and for his bachelor trip he really wanted to paddle part of the allagash wilderness waterway and i was like Hell yeah, dude. I don't have any paddling experience, but it's similar to a backpacking trip. The only difference is instead of hiking, you're paddling, but you still can't get to camp every night. Um, a, a lot of the gear that I used was the same, and I'm actually going to get into that a little bit here. And so I just want to tell you about this because if you've never done a like multi-night canoe trip, but you've done a lot of backpacking, I think you should try canoeing because you're going to be way more prepared than most people because you already have a lot of the gear that you're going to need, especially the camping gear. <clears throat> and um, in terms of just like the mileage and the pacing, it's all very similar to backpacking. You're just paddling instead of uh, hiking. And so we didn't do the, the, the full waterway. We did, I want to say like 80 miles of it. And we started on Eagle Lake and we finished at the town, the town of Allagash. A little bit of a mix between open water and river uh, sections. And it was so awesome, dude. It was so sick. I highly recommend this to anybody. Uh, especially if you've never paddled before, like you're going to absolutely love it. Trust me. Um, and I think my favorite part was some of the rapids that we did. There's a section called chase rapids on this, on this route. And I'd never done rapids before in anything. I've never been whitewater paddling or anything. And I definitely had never done it in a canoe and it was so, so fun. Um, and on the Allagash Wilderness Waterway in particular, the rangers there, because it's a fairly popular route, the rangers there will actually shuttle your gear around the hardest part of the rapids for you. And so you don't even have to run the rapids with all your stuff in your canoe. And so if you, if you dump, uh, you don't have to worry about losing your gear, which we didn't dump somehow, but, um, it was so sick. And, uh, if you're interested in learning more about the rapids, I made a video just on like my personal YouTube channel, which only has this one video right now. It's, it's not like a serious YouTube channel. It's not like a, a work thing. I just threw it up there. And um, so if you want to see what that was like, I made it's pretty funny, honestly, it's, it's a lot of swearing and goofiness, but um, I'll, I'll link the video in the description of us running the rapids and stuff. Um, and I wish I had some good stories from it to tell you guys, but everything just went so well. It actually went suspiciously well. I feel like the weather was so good, which is not normal out there. Like you can get a lot of wind on the open water, which can really slow you down. We didn't have that. You can get rain. Obviously it's Maine. It's the Northeast. We didn't really get rained on at all. Um, we, we ended up doing a, a faster pace than I thought, which that never happens. I feel like, when it comes to backpacking and stuff, it's like, if anything, you plan a certain pace and then it ends up being too hard. And so you don't go quite as fast. That didn't, the opposite happened to us. Like we were, we were chilling pretty much every day. Um, 
I think we could have done it at least a day faster than we did. Although we didn't want to just like kill ourselves out there either. We wanted to enjoy it, which we did. It was awesome. The last couple miles of every single day, we would just, it was, it was two canoes in one kayak. Flossie was in the kayak. Um, and there's five of us total. And the last few miles of every day, we would just like link the boats basically. Like we would all pull up next to each other and kind of just hold on to the boats. So we were just one unit. And then we would just float down the river. We wouldn't even paddle and we would just like drink honestly. And it was, and we would get in the water too. And like, you know, two people would be in the water, like hanging onto the boats. It was just, it was so much fun. Um, and the rapids were so fun. Uh, Allagash Wilderness Waterway, highly recommend it. And if you're a backpacker, I'm telling you, you already have so much of the gear that you need. Um, so some of the gear that I brought that is the same gear I bring backpacking, Um, and I'm not an expert canoeer, by the way, so don't take my advice on canoeing and the gear related to it as seriously as you would, uh, backpacking advice. Although you probably don't want to take that advice very seriously either, but, um, you guys know me. Um, I used just like my hummingbird hammock that I would bring backpacking. I used a backpack that I would bring backpacking my uh, evolved company backpack And when it comes to canoeing, just from what I've noticed, again, I don't know much about this, but I've noticed that a lot of people don't actually bring backpacks. Instead, they have these like barrels and like sometimes even just they just bring like totes or bins, um, which we did for our food. But for my gear, I just brought a normal backpacking backpack and I clipped the hip belts onto the canoe in case we did dump. Then I wouldn't lose my backpack Um, headlamp, obviously cooking gear is all the same. Um, we basically ate like a backpacking trip with maybe a, I brought like some vegetables and a couple cans of beans. Actually, that's another thing that's nice about it. If you're used to backpacking, it's just a little bit more luxurious than backpacking, which is kind of nice. Um, let's see. I lent uh, a couple of my friends that were on this trip, like my trekking pole tents. And so if you have a backpacking tent, you already have that. You're already good to go there. Um, I'm telling you so much of the gear is the same. The only real differences, I guess, are that, well, you need a canoe and paddles. You need a life jacket, obviously. Um, we brought like some fishing stuff, although the fishing wasn't really good that time of year. So we didn't really even fish that much, to be honest. And then I brought sandals too. I, I did still bring my trail runners just for like around camp and stuff. It's, it's kind of, it was kind of funny. I noticed this on the trip. The footwear out there is kind of the opposite of backpacking. So when you're backpacking, you have your trail runners that you hike in during the day. And then maybe you have like some sandals or camp shoes for camp. But out there, it was the opposite. So during the day, I was wearing my sandals because, you know, you're stepping in and out of the canoe. You're going in the water and stuff. But then when I got to camp, I would put on my trail runners. So I thought that was kind of funny. Um, I'll move on from this. But uh so much fun. Uh, no video from it either other than the rapids, I guess, because this was a bachelor trip for my friend. And it was so awesome having like some of my best friends in the world together there, Flossie included the rest of them aren't social media people. So I'm not going to, you know, talk about them, but, um, yeah, so much fun, dude. What a great way to end my time in Maine. And then Dan got married like two days after that's my, my friend, my friend's name, Dan. Um, he got married like two days after we got back from the trip. And so, Um, very excited for him, very proud of him and, uh, also very proud of his wife, Bonnie. So, uh, another thing I want to talk about here is just an update. Speaking of, um, romantic partners, uh, a little update on my girlfriend, Leela and her whole leg situation. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you, pretty much all you saw that video because it got a lot of views, frankly. Um, but just to recap back in March, we went on a hike together in Hawaii and she broke her leg like 50 yards away from the car. And, um, again, I don't really love talking about like my private personal relationships on here. She's not a social media person. She's not public. And, and so it feels a little weird to be honest with you, but, um, I did make that video. And like I said, I got a lot of views and so I'm, I'm sure there's some people wondering how she's doing. I've also been, um, I've also had a, a number of people that have recognized me in person since that video that have asked about her and I've gotten messages and stuff and comments. So I'm happy to say that she's doing very well now. Her leg is pretty much fully healed at this point. Like you wouldn't even know that she broke it anymore. Um, She's still dealing with like an issue with her knee now, probably related. Um, We don't really know exactly what's going on there, but um, so she's still not like a hundred, hundred percent, but in terms of the actual break and everything, 
she is uh she's doing great and so i just wanted to throw that in there and thank you so much to everyone who has asked me about her and, and left comments about her it means so much when i was at trail days back in may at trail days a number of people asked me about her um, when i was just walking around there so i appreciate that very much so let's get into the two best stories or worst stories actually to be honest from my uh my time this summer and the second one is the pct one but let me start with this dude so in like late june or excuse me late july after i got back from the pct much earlier than i anticipated i found myself with some time on my hands i could have gone back to work i could have made more episodes for you guys but i was like fuck that i'm going to the adirondacks i hadn't been to the adirondacks in so long um I think 2021 was the last time I was there, but it was only for like two days. It wasn't even very much. Um, and I just missed it. I had spent so much time there when I was in college, you know, cause I went to college pretty close to there. And then I went a little bit when I was in high school and a little bit after high school, back when I was, or after college rather back when I was living in uh, Burlington, Vermont still. And, um, I just missed it. And I was like, well, I got some time now. Um, I also built a sleeping platform in the back of my SUV and got this like freaking nice, like four inch memory foam mattress in there. It's so bougie. Um, and so I was like, I'm going on a road trip. And so I went over to the Adirondacks. I get there. I, I got there kind of late in the afternoon. It's a beautiful day, beautiful evening. The weather's supposed to be really nice the next day as well in the next few days. And you know, I go to Stewart's, I get myself a milkshake, I get some pizza, I drive to Sharpbridge Campground, I got there in the evening, and I camped out in my, my, I glamped out in my SUV, um, I'm just chilling, and uh, the next morning I wake up, and I drive to the Adirondack Lodge, and for those of you that have been to the Adirondacks, you know the lodge, it's probably the most popular trailhead in the Adirondacks, although there's a couple of very popular ones probably a little too popular um but this is like a major trailhead there you can hike mount marcy from there you can hike like so many different things there's it's like it's not just like a parking lot it's it's like a business there they have like a a gift shop and a restaurant and showers and a campground and it's just this huge parking lot you have to pay to park there which kind of sucks but um it is what it is it's nice secure place you know in which I, I do appreciate, even though I didn't want to pay. Um, I did pay. I can't remember how much it is, to be honest. It wasn't that bad, but more than I would have liked just for the day. But anyways, I get to the lodge. I pack up my stuff and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to hike the McIntyre range. Now, if you don't know what the McIntyre range is, it is three peaks. You start with right, then you hit Algonquin and then you hit Iroquois. They're all above 4,000 feet. Um, well, actually, or, or, uh, Algonquin, maybe the other ones are above 5,000 too. I can't even remember, but I know Algonquin is above 5,000 feet because it's the second highest mountain in the entirety of the Empire State, New York. And um, I had I had hiked the McIntyre Range once before in my life, back when I was 18. I'm 28 now. And so here I am in the parking lot getting ready for this hike. And I'm like, how crazy is this? 10 years have passed since I hiked these mountains. Um, it was right before my freshman year of college started, like, and I was this wide eyed, uh, anxious 18 year old kid trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life about to start this new period of my life, going to college and all this stuff and making a new group of friends and all this. Um, and then here I am 10 years later and I'm anyways, it was just this very, uh, very surreal moment for me. Um, so I pack up, I leave the parking lot. And uh, this is such a popular trailhead that they have like rangers stationed there, like at the start of the trails to like make sure that you're not going to kill yourself out there basically. And so like I'm about to start and, you know, I see the ranger standing over there and I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't want to talk to this guy. No, I'm, I'm just joking. I'm going to goof on this ranger a little bit, but um, I'm just being an asshole. He was it's probably a great thing that they do that, honestly, keeping people safe. So I'm I'm not being serious here, but um you know, the, the ego in me, I'm like, Oh, like pff, I know what I'm doing. I don't need to talk to this idiot. Right. And so I try to go, but of course the ranger flags me down. So I go over and he's like, do you have a headlamp? I'm like, yes. He's like, do you have food? I'm like, yes. He's like, do you have water? I'm like, 
look at me, dude. I got a black diamond trail running vest on. I got poles. I, I'm in great shape. Probably the best shape he'd seen all day. And I'm like, dude, I am, I am ready for the McIntyre range. Like, don't, don't try to tell me like, you know, so, you know, I, I punched him in the face and I started my hike. That's not true. Um, but I did have all the things I had a rain jacket. He asked me about, you know, I was good to go. Um, it's honestly a really good thing that they do that they do this because this is such a popular trailhead. And it, like I said, this is where a lot of people will hike Mount Marcy from, which is the highest mountain in New York. Therefore, very popular. A lot of people that aren't as experienced are like, oh, I want to hike the highest mountain in New York. So let's go ha- hike Mount Marcy. They head out there in flip flops and now they have a ranger there to intercept them and be like, hey, dude, you got to you can't you can't wear the flip flops, man. Grab a headlamp, grab some real shoes and then come back tomorrow. So, no, it's probably a good thing to do this. Um, But I was good to go. And so I leave on the hike and I'm calling this a hike. But to be honest with you, I was kind of kind of trying to trail run a little bit. That's right. Big trail runner over here. Not really. I've never competed or, or raced, but honestly, when I'm by myself at this point, assuming I'm in good enough shape for it, um, I probably wouldn't do it like my first couple hikes of the year, but um, I like to trail run when I'm by myself. And for me, trail running, it's not like, okay, ready, start the clock, run as hard as I can for as far as I can. You know, I'll, the first couple miles, I'm not running, you know, I'm just getting warmed up on the uphills. I am definitely not running. And so for me, trail running is just going as fast as I can reasonably, you know, without completely killing myself. I should pull up my Strava because I honestly don't even remember what my time was on this hike. Um, but anyways, you know, I'm moving, I'm moving pretty good. And after hiking some of the PCT and just hiking around the whites in just New England a lot over the summer, I was in pretty good shape and I was feeling pretty good. And so I'm going up right and I'm just flying by people, dude. These people are just amazed at how fast I'm going. They're like, holy shit, we've never seen this. Um, I'm exaggerating, but I actually did get a couple comments. <laughs> I'm going to brag about this. I did get a couple comments on this hike about how fast I was going. Um, but I, you know, I was moving pretty good. Nobody passed me, but I'm sure there's plenty of people out there. Probably a lot of people watching this, to be honest and listening that, um, have done this hike or would have done this hike faster than I did. But anyways, I'm just trying to illustrate I was moving and I was feeling good. Um, I get up, right. I head over to Algonquin all as well. I chatted with the, the, the steward they have up there, this kid from North Carolina. He was talking about his job a little bit. Um, and unlike the ranger, he came over to me and he started to ask like the questions. And then he, he quickly realized that like, dude, this guy I'm talking to is a stud. I don't need to tell him shit. Okay. He knows I'm just being an asshole in this episode. I'm sorry. Um, we had a good chat though. He, he was a cool kid, college kid, summer gig. He gets to go up and hang out on Adirondack, Adirondack high peaks, uh, for a living, you know, for a summer. So anyways, I head over to Iroquois, the, the third and final peak of this hike slash trail run slash whatever you want to call it douchebag run and um it gets a little scrambly just a little bit it's a little the trail's a little more rugged um i tag the peak i head back down and once i started going down um you know i was done climbing for the day but i still had i don't even remember like five or six miles until i got back to the car and so you know it's still a decent ways to go and so I'm I'm being very careful on the way down because it's a little bit scrambly. It's not really super runnable terrain. I'm sure someone can run it, but you know, I was I was going as quick as I could, but I was being safe and I was very aware that I was being safe. I was like, okay, like careful footing here, like don't get too cocky. I was like, okay, I'm getting a little out of control, got to slow it down. I I I felt like I was doing a really good job. I was I I felt like I was doing such a good job. That in my head, I was literally thinking like, damn, I'm getting pretty good at this. Like, I never get injured doing this. Like, trail running can be kind of dangerous sometimes if you're on like gnarly terrain and you're moving quick. And I was like, I never fall. I never get injured. Like, I'm I'm getting pretty good at this. I was even thinking, because my road trip wasn't over, I was actually going to head over to the White Mountains a few days after this. And I was like, man, maybe I should see if Flossie wants to do a Prezi Traverse. I've never done a single day Prezi Traverse before. I feel like I'm in good enough shape for it which I've always felt like I haven't been on the other opportunities I've had. And I was like, man, maybe I should see if he wants to do this Prezi Traverse. Um, so I was just getting really cocky. I was feeling real good. I get down the mountain. 
And I went through Avalanche Lake, which again, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. Uh, super popular, super, super scenic uh, place in the Adirondacks. It wasn't even that crowded when I was there, which was actually pretty sweet. I had it mostly to myself, which I feel like is a rarity. This was on like a, a Monday or a Tuesday or something. It wasn't during the weekend, which probably explains it. But um, oh, it was so nice. And then I get to like the final three miles of this like 14 to 15 mile loop that I did. All the climbing's done. And these last three miles, I've done them before. And so I knew this. And also I had the map and everything, obviously. These last three miles, you are chilling. It is like slightly downhill. And this is a very, very popular trail that I'm on. And so they have graded it. They have maintained the shit out of this trail. It's wide. It doesn't even have that many rocks either for the Adirondacks, especially. Um, it's, it's, it's literally like just the cruisiest shit. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, okay, this is the home stretch. And so I really start to pick up my pace now. Again, I'm, I'm being dramatic here, but I, you know, I was jogging. I was like full on jogging at this point, probably not at like a super impressive pace, but you know, I was moving pretty good. I knock out the first mile. I knock out the second mile. I only got one mile to go. And at this point I'm like, I'm starting to get a little tired, but you know, I'm still feeling fine, but I'm definitely starting to get a little fatigued. Um, but I know it's like one mile left, dude. That's nothing. It's like I said, it's slightly downhill and it's not rocky. So it's just the perfect running conditions, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm chugging along and I passed these two, these two clowns that were just like day hiking. And I say clowns again, I'm being sarcastic. These guys are really awesome, but, um, they were just like normal day hikers They're similar age to me. And they had like, you know, they weren't trail running. They didn't have like trail running gear. They had boots. They had like a normal backpack, you know, not a running vest or anything like that. And, you know, I freaking blew right by these guys. And then after I passed them, they shout to me and they're like, Hey, we're going to run with you. And I was like, I was like, fuck it. Let's do it. Let's run. And so, and so these guys, they're like, they're like running behind me with like their backpacks flapping around and their boots and shit. And, you know, we're kind of chatting and, um, it was awesome, but it was distracting. Like I said earlier, I was being very focused on safety. I was like, I'm going to go quick, but I'm going to do it safely. And I didn't have any, and I was going over like some crazy stuff earlier. I'm telling you like very like gnarly terrain and I was fine. And then now I'm on the easiest part of the whole day, right? And so I think what happened is, well, a combination of two things. Number one, I think when I started running with these guys, I was in front, they were both behind me. I think subconsciously a little bit, like just a little bit of ego and competitiveness kicks in. I wasn't doing this on purpose, but I think I started to increase my pace just a little bit, just totally unintentionally, you know, you're running with other people. You just, I just started to go a little faster, I think. And probably the bigger thing is now I'm, I'm chatting with these guys and like, I'm not focused on my running anymore or my safety. I let my guard down and we run about a half mile all as well. I know we're getting really close at this point. I know it's only going to be a few minutes before we get back to the car. And I just stepped wrong and I rolled the shit out of my ankle. I was a half mile away from finishing this hike, guys. A half mile. I was on the easiest terrain of the whole day. A freaking half mile. And I rolled my ankle really badly. I've never really had ankle issues. Um, there's been a few times where I've like, you know, you step on it wrong and it hurts for a second, but it's fine. This was not <laughs> that circumstance. I stepped wrong and it hurt like hell and I felt it pop. Like I felt something in my ankle pop. So I was like, fuck. I was like, I knew, I knew that I hurt myself pretty bad when this happened. And so I like, I stopped running and these guys are like, oh shit. Like, you know what happened? And I was like, God damn it. I didn't fall somehow. Thankfully it probably would have been worse if I fell, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't leave my feet. But like, I'm telling you when I felt that pop, I was like, oh God, that's never happened before. That's not good. And so it hurt like hell. I stop 
and then some of the pain dissipates enough to the point where I, you know, I, I just walked the rest of the half mile back to the car, only a few minutes. And, um, and I was okay. I could bear weight on it. So I didn't like snap a tendon or like break a bone or anything, but like, I knew that it, it was hurt pretty bad. And I was like, uh, no, I was like, there goes my pressy traverse. There goes the rest of my hiking for the next, who knows how long. Um, I was like, that's probably the end of my hiking this summer, which is a little dramatic, but, um, oh man, it sucked. I get back, I go to the car, you know, after an hour or two of not moving it after just sitting there, it starts to swell up and you guys know what a sprained ankle is, right? And so that all happens. I, and this has never happened to my ankles before. And so this was all new to me. I'm like Googling, like, how do I tell if I can ever walk again? You know, I was on WebMD. Turns out I have cancer. No, just kidding. Um, but, you know, I just, yeah, I was all freaked out and bummed out, to be honest. And um, I never went to the doctor, but this was, like I said, this was in like late July. It's as of the time of this recording, it's early September. And I can like walk again fine now. And I've even hiked a little bit with it, although not very much. I definitely haven't backpacked either. And I haven't trail ran either. I've just like done like a very easy day hike. And um, it's still bothering me a little bit. I'll be honest, after Googling and stuff, my understanding was that like, if it's if it's like a really bad sprain, then you probably won't be able to bear weight on it. But if you can bear weight on it, then it'll probably heal up in like a couple weeks. And I was able to bear weight on it. Like I was limping around for a few days after, but like I was never like, you know, completely immobilized. And so I was like, okay, it'll probably get better in a few weeks. It's probably just like a very mild sprain, like grade one. Um, and it has recovered a lot. Like I said, the swelling's gone and stuff like that, but it's still been bothering me a little bit when I step wrong, when I, I can't extend my foot fully either yet. And so I'm starting to get a little concerned. So maybe in a few weeks, if it's not making any more progress, I'll finally go to the doctors. But yeah, that sucked. And I don't know. I just thought it was so ironic that I was being so careful on the hard terrain. And yet it was literally the easiest part at the very end of the day. I was so close to the freaking car. Like it was then that I actually like hurt myself pretty bad. Like, um, I mean, yeah, it's still bothering me. But anyways, all right, let's talk about the PCT. So... <laughs> I gave the background at the beginning of the episode here. A big reason why I took so much time off this summer was so that I could go finish the PCT, finally. And so going into this summer, I had two sections left. I had a 60-ish mile section from Syed Valley, California into Oregon up to Ashland. And so I was going to go knock that section out first. Uh, Luke McKay was going to come with me. And then after that, I was going to travel up to Washington and finish the last section I had left, which was Stevens Pass north to the border, Canadian border. And I want to say that was about 170 miles. And um, my good friend Syntax77 was going to join me for that entire section, which I was so excited about because I haven't seen him in years. And also he's never done like a through hike before, which I guess this... 170 miles isn't like a through hike, but you know what I mean? He had never done like a long, long backpacking trip before where you have to like resupply and, you know, he had never lived like the through hiker lifestyle before and he was going to get a taste of that. I was honestly shocked that he even wanted to come with me, but he did. And he was stoked. Him and his wife traveled up there in their RV. Like they were all, they planned like their whole summer around this. Like we had this whole plan. And so... In the back of my head, though, I'm like, of course, I'm like, well, what if I get burnt out again? This is the third year in a row. I'm like, what if it happens? I even waited until like a couple days before I left to buy my plane ticket, which I got rinsed on. I paid like way too much money because I waited so long to buy the ticket. But in my head, I was like, I got to make sure there's no fires before I go out there. And um, and I went earlier this year, too. So last year, when I went back to try to finish, I went in August. And then, of course, I got burnt out. I couldn't finish. And everyone in the comments was like, you're an idiot. Why'd you go in August? Like you should have gone earlier. And I was like, you know, they had a point. They had a great point. And so this year I was like, I'm going in July. I'm going as early as possible. All winter, I was watching the snow levels in Washington because I also didn't want to be like on super sketchy snow traverses either. But, you know, I, I tried to strike that balance. And so I go out there 
um, in like, it was like the first week of July. I thought it was like the perfect time, you know, late enough that the snow wouldn't be that bad, but early enough that fire season wouldn't start yet. All of the hikers that I talked to that were around me were saying the same thing. Like we tried to time it like this too. And um, there were no fires on the trail, at least near me when I first went out there. Right. And so I go out, Luke joins me and we, we tackle this first section from Syad to Ashland. Uh, our very first night, coincidentally, we just randomly ran into Frozen from Outdoor Adventures, who I'm sure a lot of you have seen before. He's been a guest on the show multiple times over the years. Um, we didn't plan it at all, but we just so happened to show up at the same campsite the very same night, which was so cool because I'd never met him in person before. Um, just total random thing. So that was really fun. The next day, we get about halfway through the day and Luke was not feeling well. And so he ends up turning around and bailing early. I keep going to Ashland. And after like three and a half days of hiking, I get there. No problem. I'm feeling good. But after I get to Ashland, I, uh, I'm i pulling up Watch Duty, which is the app that tracks fires in the Western United States. And I'm also looking on like social media and the PCTA's website and stuff. And um, well, you guessed it. Third year in a row, there's trail closures because of new fires that started when I was out there um, right in the middle of section K, which was the first part of my Washington section. And so the trails closed and through there and I'm like, you've got to be joking. I'm like, this is the third freaking year in a row. And I mean, honestly, that's the story. So instead of going up to Seattle, I went home after Ashland. <laughs> like I flew home. I was out there for like five days and I didn't finish. So I still have from Stevens Pass to the border. And like I said a second ago, last year, everyone was like, you went too late. Like you were kind of asking for it. And I was like, yeah, they're, they were right. But this year I went as early as I felt comfortable with, like the, with the snow levels and fire season just came early this year, of course. And so I almost wonder if there's someone out there that, I mean, I didn't announce that I was going out there. So this is just ridiculous, obviously, but in the back of my head, and I had a couple people tell me this too. They're like, dude, I'm pretty sure someone is just waiting for you to go each year and then starting fires on the trail so that you can't finish. Cause that's what it feels like, honestly. Um, but the upside was that I got to spend more time back in new England with my friends. I got to go sprain my ankle in the Adirondacks and, uh, I still had a really great summer, but what a freaking bummer last year. After my failure, I said, I was like, oh, I'm going to go back after I'm going to go back the next year and I'm going to finish it. Finally, 2024 is going to be my year. And this year I'm almost like, I don't know if I want to go back next year. I do want to go back and finish it, but I'm almost like, do I just wait at this point? Do I just wait, go do the CDT at some point and then finish my triple crown on that last section of the PCT? So I don't know. Maybe I'll still go back next year. I don't know what I'll do, but um, what a freaking bummer that is. Um, and it's a huge bummer for all the PCT hikers that were on trail this year. Cause like, uh, they were, they were not having a good time. A lot of the ones I saw, cause it was like the very beginning of all the fires out there is basically <laughs> when I went out and it came so early this year. So no one was expecting it at least yet. And watching them have to confront the fact that they're going to have to skip sections because of the fires and deal with that, um, for the first time was, not great. And I know how they feel and it sucks. And so if you were out there this year and your hike got all messed up because of fires, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I think that's going to do it folks. We're going to get back into some interviews here. Uh, but thanks for letting me share my summer. It was such an amazing summer despite the PCT failure again. Ugh. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Hopefully next week. We'll see.